Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to the show. I was humbled this week. I had a birthday. I turned a big four or five. My lovely wife and awesome family chipped in and got me this Charvel Joe Duplantis signature guitar, which I absolutely love and I can't put it down. I had no idea. It was a total surprise and looking around the room, I really don't understand why they would actually buy me another guitar, but I figure they know what makes me happy and it totally worked. It's unreal, but I'm not going to hold back and I'm going to be brutally honest in telling you what I think about the Joe Duplantis signature Charvel. I'm a huge Gojira fan and I really did want this guitar for a long time. My wife just found out by talking to the guys at the guitar shop, they knew that I wanted it. But all that aside, I didn't get this just to play Gojira riffs. But the main aspects of the guitar that I really like is the fact that it's just really solid, it stays in tune. Even when you do drop tunings and things, the neck does not move. It's got the graphite reinforcements in it and it just is super stable and sounds great all the time. But that simplistic approach just really works with me. It's elegant and simple where it needs to be. It's got the mahogany body, so it's going to have great tone and it really does. So the first things that I noticed out of the box, apart from being a beautiful guitar, of course, is it's actually really light. I expected it being a mahogany body to actually have a bit more weight to it. And I was really surprised how loud it is just acoustically. You can hear how loud that is. It's, it's a lot louder than any guitar that I've ever had. And, and the other thing that I noticed when I plugged it in is it's just got a great tone through it. It's a really simplistic sort of tone. It's not something that just like tears your face off. It's got a vintage sort of feel about it. It does chugga chugga fantastic through any amp. It's just got a really nice vibe that you can just turn up the amp and just get all the gain that you want just from the amp. And you can hear a lot more of those subtle sort of overtones. But I'll just go through all the specs and hardware with you really quickly. It's got a Charvel branded Tone Pro style bridge, like a Tunematic bridge. It's really nice. It feels really good. It sounds great. And it's got the Demazio Joe Duplantis signature pickups in it. And these are just really nice. They're the Fortitude named. The actual bridge pickup, he designed it and worked with Demazio to make. The neck pickups, it's the 36th anniversary PAF style pickup. But the bridge pickup in particular has just got... It's got a vintage vibe to it, but it just does chugger really well. I'll just show you that quickly. It's a really great sounding pickup. Both of them are. There's great separation between all the strings and it's just a really nice tone. The switch feels really nice. It's nice and firm and just doesn't feel like it's all worn out and rattles around in there like some of them do. And the volume pot's just smooth taper and just stays exactly where you want it. It's not, it's not like those low resistant pots that can sometimes move around. It's just, It'll stay where you need it to. And then we get to the body. The body is actually a beautiful piece of mahogany, a lot lighter than I said as usual. It's got some really nice ergonomics and cutouts here so you can get easy access to these higher frets. And it really is simple just to get your hand in for all those higher frets. There's actually a lot of room in this cavity here and it just feels really nice to do it. And then we get to the neck and this really is a selling point for the guitar. It's just, it's a beautiful piece of ebony on the fingerboard. It's absolutely flawless. The inlays are really well done. And it's got a really strange inlay on the seventh fret, like a block inlay style thing, which is really cool as well. I really like that addition. Simple white dotted inlays. The frets are all jumbo frets. And then you've got a plastic nut down here. It would have been really nice if it was graphite or that graph textile tusk nut, but it's a plastic nut. It's really hard all the same. And then you've got the Charvel branded locking tuners. They work really nice. They're really smooth action and everything about it's just really solid. So I guess now what I'll just talk about is a couple of things, couple of areas with the guitar they could have done better. And most of it, it's not in the hardware or the parts, it's just in that last bit of finishing that they did. And it really is one of those borderline guitars where you don't know if it should be 3000 or 1500. It's on the lower side of the scale, but I do believe that they cut a few too many corners just making it and sort of rushing it out the door when things just could have been done a little bit nicer. And a shame with the body is there's a couple of little surface dings in it. I don't know if they sharpen the light here, but they're just definitely there and you can feel them with your finger. And it's a bit of a shame when it's a brand new guitar and there's a few little tiny like surface dings and things. The finish is all done really well, but it's just those tiny little dings that sort of, it's a new guitar. You don't want to have dings in it. It's always a hard one with small imperfections and dings in the body. Like it, you don't know if it leaves the factory like that or it's, you don't know how many hands are actually holding the guitar before you get it. But this wasn't a floor model in the shop that had been sitting a while. This was a special order that came straight to us. And then we move on to the neck. There was absolutely no buzzing on any of the strings, but the frets were finished very poorly. I'm going to say that. It's like they'd just gone over them, leveled them off with like 800 or 600 grit emery, 
and that was it. You could feel them as you did vibratos and things on the strings. They just felt really grainy and gritty. And that was just something they could have just spent a little bit more attention to, just finishing that off and just smoothing them over a bit better. And on the actual ends here, you could feel some of the ends of just slightly little dags and things where they're just being filed smooth and flat, but just left a tiny little dag. So it wasn't a problem for me because I just went and finished them up and just smoothed them all over and things when I changed the strings to my gauge. But it is just something that it's a little bit disappointing when it's such a beautiful feeling neck that out of the box, it just felt a little bit grainy and gritty. It's nothing that stayed with it and you can easily just fix it up. But I don't think you should have to. And the other thing was with the nut, the string height on the nut was just really high. The action was super high coming off the nut to the first fret. It was almost like an acoustic guitar. The very next day I used my fret files and just fixed it all up and made the action exactly how it should be for this sort of guitar. And it feels absolutely beautiful, but I don't think I should have had to do that. But all that aside with the finishing of the frets and just needing to rework the nut a little bit, that was absolutely everything wrong with this guitar. Everything else is absolutely flawless. I'm not going to lie to you. The playability and the sound of this is absolutely amazing. I've put 10 to 52 gauge strings on this. It just feels really good. It's the 25 and a half scale inch neck and uh, just strumming chords and playing along. It's just, it's an absolute joy to do. And it just sounds so different than I'm used to just like metal machines that rip your face off. But this does that metal as well. It's just, it's really cool. As far as the neck goes and having to do truss rod adjustments, it is absolutely stable. Those graphite rods that are in it, the neck does not move. I've had it in a few different tunings. It's right now it's in D standard tuning, but down in like drop C and I've had it in standard like 440 as well. And I haven't had to adjust the neck in any stage over doing that. It's just never moved and it's kept the same sort of relief and everything, which is beautiful. As far as the bridge and height and everything goes, I haven't touched that either. It's exactly how it was out of the box. It's only the frets and the nut and those small little dings. Other than that, the guitar just sounds so cool and it's just, it's a joy to play in. But that's everything I wanted to talk about with the guitar. I'll just play some riffs now. We'll just check out the different pickups and some tones and yeah. <laughs> think it's strictly just a guitar that I'd only use for playing Gojira style riffs. I've found it's just got some great separation and you can hear a lot of those open strings with a lot of gain and things like Mastodon riffs were just so much fun to play on it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And as you can hear, I tried to play some of those riffs that have like really intricate sort of separation and open strings and just different sort of nuances about them. And this guitar just does that beautifully. It's just like a really great rock style guitar. And I can honestly just tell it's just going to be one of my favorite guitars to play, I think. It's a really great guitar just to test out different amps and just see like the whole different textures and what the amp can actually do itself. It's not compressing a whole signal and just like pushing a whole heap of metal. You're actually getting different textures and different tones out of amps that I didn't get before. So it's just really cool. I'm really enjoying it, but, but I'm just going to leave it there, guys. I've been absolutely honest with the pros and cons with the guitar. I think it's a really cool instrument and definitely one of my favorites. But um, until next time, guys, take care. I'll see you. Bye.